Okay, so I just want to say thanks to everybody for coming, especially so close to Christmas. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Ian, I'm the co-owner of ATP, most of you do know me at this stage. So, I just want to give a quick background as to why I'm doing a talk. I'm not trying to be the Grinch of Christmas and like tell you, you can't enjoy yourself, you can't you know, have chocolate, have your wine. And I know it's, it's not a case of, you know, you have to cut everything out. That's not what I'm here to tell you to do, okay? So, like, don't be thinking by here, you're going to leave thinking if you want to achieve results, then you have to just not have a fun Christmas. That is not the case. The reason I wanted to put this talk together is because I'm a coach for over seven years and I've seen so many clients come back in January and it's not been overly dramatic to say in a state, uh, a state, a state in a, what I mean is a state of panic and a state of frenzy, not a physical state. But it is, it is a case that they come back in January and it's absolute panic and it's guilt, it's you know, lot being lost about what to do. Uh, it's not every client, but there's a lot of clients that come back and they just think, I've done the dog at Christmas, now I've put on all this weight, I'm gonna to start to crash diet to try and get me back to where I was pre-Christmas, all right? What's really important to understand is the weight you gain at Christmas isn't gonna be weight that's gonna stay on you for good, it's gonna be weight that you, you've over it. So the goal from this is, by the end of this talk, you're gonna have a different mindset leaving of how to approach Christmas this year. You're gonna understand energy balance, and that's one of the fundamentals I'm gonna really give you, is understanding energy balance. If you don't understand the way in this talk, I feel I've not done my job. Because if you do understand that, for me, it gives you massive power moving forward. And I also hope by the end of the talk, when January comes, you do not panic. You understand what's happening when the scales goes up, you understand what you need to do to start making changes, all right? I'm not gonna keep it that long. Biggest goal for me in this talk is that I don't run past 40 minutes. That'll be tough for those that know me. All right, so I'm gonna talk really quickly. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is people have a think for a second and figure out what does Christmas mean to you? Because I think that's the first step. For each individual here, it means different things to different people. Does Christmas to you mean family? Does it mean with your friends? Does it mean excess of alcohol? Does it mean getting loads of presents? Does it mean having nice food? Does it mean eating all the chocolate? All right, what does it mean to you? When you think of Christmas, what comes to your mind, okay? Because if coming to your mind is Christmas that I, it's chocolate, it's alcohol, it's, it's out, it's a free for all. That's the mindset we need to try and shift from. Because the free for all mentality is what's causing the issue. What I'd said to Key, and I was like, some stuff I was like, can I say this? I was like, people know me well enough, I'm going to say it anyway. People take this approach come Christmas of, I'm going to take a break from eating good food, I'm going to eat everything in my sight because I've been dieting all year or whatever. I'm like, you haven't been dieting all year. You've been dieting for three or four weeks and then you've probably not dieted, and then you've dieted for another three or four weeks and then you've not dieted. You've not dieted all year, so you don't deserve to have a break for two weeks. If you choose to eat all the food, understanding you're choosing that, not that it's, I deserve it because I've been good for this period of time. It's, it's same with exercise. It's people taking a break from exercise. And if you're training, if you're an athlete and you're training five or six times a week, pretty hard, pretty physically, then a two week break is probably the best thing for you because your body can fully recover and you come back in January stronger and more recovered. If you're training once or twice a week, like well done, and I mean that, well done for training once or twice a week, but if you're training once or twice a week, you have five days to recover. Your body doesn't need a break. So to say I'm taking a break at Christmas to give my body a break is false. You don't need that break. So what I'd suggest is that if you want to just not train, understand you're doing it because you don't want to train, not give yourself another reason that is false. So if Christmas to you means eating all the chocolate, drinking for four, five, six, seven days, opening a bottle of wine every day, all right? You have to understand the word consequence, I think, is always associated negatively, but it's important that we, we just associate it with, with everything. If you do something, there's a consequence. There's either a positive consequence or a negative consequence, but there is. So when you overconsume alcohol or you overconsume food, there's a consequence. The consequence is weight gain or fat gain, okay? And Owning that is so important because where people get really frustrated and lost is the confusion as to why I'm up with What's happened? I don't understand. I've been really good with my food, but... And when you really dig deep with people, they, they get that 
they have over consumed and when you understand energy balance by the end of the night you're going to own the responsibility of deciding to eat more than you need which leads to weight gain or reducing your food enough that your body has to use fat stores to help you to stay the same weight now for me there's a guy james smith a lot of people might follow him he says he said a quote about christmas i think is absolutely bang on if you don't gain a little bit of weight over christmas you haven't done christmas and and i think he's, he's dead right so there is going to be weight gain for almost everybody here because what are we doing we're moving way less than we normally do we're not probably not training as much and we're eating way more food than we normally do and different types of food than we normally do so that's going to lead to weight gain so understanding what christmas means to you if it is alcohol if it is chocolate that's the mindset we need to try and just change a little bit as we're going all right so when you create a new mindset you create new results and if what you've done this year is different to what you've done last year you, you'll get different results if what you do this year is the exact same as last year you're going to get the same result all right so when you do the same thing over and over again you're going to get the same result people this baffles me still people believe i'll do this and something else will happen but it's the same thing you've done every single year expect to gain the same weight you've done every single year you have to do something a little differently if you are eating a full box of chocolates all right this man here has taught me straight out that he kind of talks into celebrations a lot so all right and sean yeah so i don't know i put up a poll on instagram or and i was getting people to guess the calories in three celebrations and it was some wild guesses right but it was 135 calories i'll explain what calories are people might be unsure in a bit but 135 calories in three celebrations think of how many celebrations you're mindlessly eating and that's a key word we're using here is mindless okay because that's what you're doing if the celebration in front of you you're opening you're gone there was nine gone just for say that's only 400 calories if you are supposed to be on 2000 calories that's one fifth of your daily calories you have just consumed in 30 seconds that's how it works if you understand calories energy balance that's what happens and if i'm very biased to energy balance because all the science is there to back it up i'm not here to sell you anything or to make you any like any voodoo plan it's just to tell you exactly how it is and i'm not wrong on this i have enough to back it up so make sure just really take into consideration energy balance calories matter and you can choose to you don't have to go counting calories to lose weight you don't have to go counting calories to be a healthy person but being calorie aware is one of the most important things when you're going enjoying christmas enjoy christmas 100 percent but if your goal is to not massively gain weight to not do the absolute dog i ask people all the time how many one of my buddies sent me a snack of the kimberly biscuits my favorite biscuits i was like how many calories in one he sent back laughing faces i was serious i was like what, like, why haven't you checked how many are in one like you know what i mean so just just know because then you can like I, this story i think everyone knows this is my chocolate biscuit story of like the chocolate digestives that i have at home i literally have to do tricks with myself to stop me from eating five or six of them or even ten of them but i know there's 83 calories in one so i get to three i'm like i've eaten 250 calories in about five seconds if i keep eating them which i would easily do then i'm going to gain weight because i do it almost every night i have to wrap the packet hide the packet do something with the packet to get away it's not easy and this is a real thing i want to get across people and i know everyone will say i know but losing weight is so hard for people who have lost weight you understand how hard it is okay keeping it off is even harder so unless you're consistently working on it i said the key in a while ago if the people who are in shape the people who have lost weight and kept it off they all have one thing in common they have the knowledge they have the basic knowledge it's not knowing what i know it's the basic knowledge of nutrition of exercise of sleep of stress they, they understand what they need to do if you anybody who's in shape knows the, the basics it's on you to learn the basics and that's exactly why we're here tonight that's why we're doing what we're doing in atp is to get you to give the basics and we always say that people have to want to learn but like if you're ever going to get a result that's going to last you have to be willing to learn and that's what i'm hoping you came here tonight so your friends that didn't give up to them all right so energy balance this is probably we're going to spend the longest part on this look for me it's it's everything it really really is okay uh, i'm going to try to explain it basic and then we're going to get a bit in a bit more detail energy in versus energy out so 
you get a certain amount of food, okay? So you get a certain amount of food you can eat that your body can use for energy. As soon as you go past that number, your body does what it is meant to do. It stores fat, it stores excess body fat, okay? Forget about numbers for a second. So you're drinking food and alcohol, or food and just drinks in general that have calories in them. Calories is just a form of energy. That's all it is, a form of energy, okay? You're drinking that, if, if it's 2,000 calories and you're hitting that, when you start eating more than that on a daily basis, your body promotes fat storage. So we just start getting body fat. The problem with health in general, in my opinion, is not that we're overweight, it's that we're over fat. Okay, and people don't understand that. You know, not, oh, the issue with your health isn't overweight, it's you're carrying too much body fat for your health. And we need to try and reduce that. There are a million ways you can reduce your body fat, but there's one fundamental principle that's happening, no matter what diet you're on. Like, uh, trust me on this, because people fall for these diets. It doesn't matter what diet it is. There's one fundamental law and principle that's happening here. If you're losing body fat, you're not giving your body enough energy for what it needs to do. So that's exercising, moving, keeping you alive. You're not giving it enough energy. It pulls fat, the excess fat that you store, that body fat that you've built up over the years, it pulls that, converts it to energy, and then we start losing body fat. That's what happens. A big thing to take from it is that the best way and the most solid advice I can give to lose body fat is do it the exact same way you put it on over a long period of time. You have not put on body fat in five weeks, in six weeks, and especially in two weeks of Christmas, you've not put on loads of body fat. You have over time, Key pointed out a couple of days ago, if you think the weight you put on, say, between your holidays, between Christmas, between your, your couple of breaks or whatever that you might have, you might put up a couple of pounds, okay? If that's one pound of fat, but you don't do anything about that for the last 10 years, that's 10 pounds of fat you've put on over 10 years, okay? So you have to find a way to manage your energy balance, all right? So all food and drink have an energy value. Everything has, just like, I don't kind of be like blunt about it, but everything has an energy value except zero calorie drinks, which is what we touched on later on. Alcohol counts too. We're gonna to do a section on alcohol, so I think it's not spoken about enough. So everything you consume has to do something. If you consume way too much drink, way too much alcohol, you're in fat storage, it's what we're meant to do. Like your body is just like, we're still like Neanderthals in regards of like how we are. So if you're just consuming too much, it's like, I'm gonna need this later on for energy because food is now scarce. So I'm gonna store that fat for later on in case I need it. Food is not far from scarce now, it's absolutely everywhere. And this is why it's such a challenge. So it says like energy in is just this, but it's way more than that. And this is, this is one of the biggest problems that we have is that Energy in isn't just the food you're eating and drinking. You're fighting against marketing. So we were at Musgraves the other day and they just had cakes at the till. Think of Dunn's, they have the bars at the till. That is classed as marketing. In Dunn's, at this stage, they have levels of ice cream. They have kids' ice creams at a lower level. So when you're there with your kid, then they're there to see the ice creams. Like this is, you're fighting against that marketing straight away. The psychology behind nutrition, behind dieting, I personally believe doing the thing that you need to do is the very, very easy part. So eating the food you need to eat, simple. Cooking the food you need to cook, simple. Understanding what you need to eat, absolutely simple. What's the hard part? Making the decision to do it. Making the decision to not have the 10 celebrations. Making the decision to go and exercise. Making the decision to, when you're doing a shot, not put that into the trolley. It's decision making, if that's where the mindset has to change. It's the decision of I'm going to have four drinks and try and stop instead of having eight drinks. Like actually getting four drinks and having them is the easy part. Getting the ice cream, putting it into the, into the trolley and not thinking, that's your mindless part. Until you become aware of energy in foods, then you're never going to get past, like it's just a bear. It's like, I'm biased about it, but like it's, it's not just a bear. It's like 240 calories in a bear. Like, and if, if you accept that responsibility of you get that amount, like, and everybody here is different. So people are like, oh, how many calories should I have? Like, everybody's completely different. How many calories I should have versus you should have is different. It's about you walking it out. And then, so the best thing for that is to do like a food diary, which we know at this stage is very hard for everyone to do a seven day food diary. Do a two day food diary. That'll give you a fair idea of kind of the calories you're consuming if it's a weekday and a weekend day.
all right? Trying to get an act of food early off somebody is probably the biggest challenge as a PT as I've come across in my career. It really has. Uh, it's just, but like, people will naturally, will naturally, you know, not put in stuff, or they just genuinely will forget to put in stuff, or they'll deliberately not put in stuff, okay? So, you're only lying to yourself, okay? So, understanding what energy in there is, energy out is where we see problems. Energy out is the calories we burn. Calories we burn, we burn more from keeping us alive. That's it. Right? The majority of them are born keeping alive. There's actually not much we can do to speed that up. So people say, like, you know, oh, build a lot of muscle, builds up your metabolism. It's actually a really, really small amount of calorie expenditure that you can increase, like a, like a minuscule amount by, build, by getting lean muscle mass. Remember, it's very hard for women to build lean muscle mass again. So forget about really kind of increasing your metabolism. That you kind of have what you have, and that's, that's kind of it. You're stuck with that. Uh, if you have a slow metabolism and you're on medication, you don't have a slow metabolism anymore. Okay, so people use the excuse of, oh, I have a slow metabolism, like as in they, they've been diagnosed with slow metabolism, the doctor has them on medication. You know that as the same as somebody who doesn't have slow metabolism because the medication is counteracting that fact. All right, so like of all excuses, I've heard every single one of them. All right, so <laughs> digest and absorb food. Again, we burn calories by eating food. Again, such a small amount. So what I don't want to focus on is the micros. We want to focus on the macro stuff, the stuff that's going to really help us change, okay? So forget about your, a higher protein diet is definitely going to burn slightly more calories than it will have with carbs and proteins, okay? Your body has to work harder, break that down. Small amount. Don't be too concerned about it, okay? Helping us move outside purposeful exercise is our knees. This is why everyone's harping on about steps. Getting your steps up is so important. I have been struggling normally in my way, fluctuates three to four kilos in a week. Since I'm on the laptop a lot more, since I'm doing a lot less on the floor, my weight, one kilo, maybe two kilos max is that fluctuation. I've realized now I have to start eating less food because I'm not moving as much as I did before. I'm still training the same, but my day-to-day -day steps have dropped massively. That's me deciding I don't want to gain weight, so I'm gonna adjust my food going in because I'm not doing as much going out, all right? It's just a case of like, that's how it is. It's, if you understand, that's how it is. If you don't want to gain weight, here's what you need to do. So if you can either decide to try and move more, to kind of keep eating as you're eating. If your weight has stayed the same, if you know your maintenance weight, is what I say to everybody. You know what your weight, weight, what your calories are for maintenance because if your weight has stayed the same for a two or three week period, everything you've eaten and drank in those two or three weeks, the exercise you've done, the movement you've done, that's it. To stay the same weight, that's what you need to do. So if you started to gain weight, something has happened. You've started moving less or you've started eating more. And understanding which one of those has happened allows you to go, all right, this is what's happened. I want to lose the weight again, so this is what I need to change. Does that make sense? Slightly. Okay. Regular exercise is key, but it is not the answer. And this sounds mental coming from somebody who owns a gym. It's not your answer to weight loss. Forget it. Any gym that tells you that or trying to get you in, it's not. It is here for... 10, 15 other reasons. It's to be healthier, it's to make you feel really good, it's to get you stronger, it's for bone density, to build muscle mass, for just, it's not, forget about it for calorie burn, just forget about it. Use it as a bonus tool, that's it. If you do a spin class and if your watch says 400 calories, your watch is lying to you. It's about 150, 200 calories. It does, there's no idea how many calories you burnt. Don't think, I've had burnt 200 calories in my spin class, I'm gonna have a bar of chocolate for that 200 calories. Just have your food as normal, exercise for the right reasons. People do this way too much. They'll come in and they'll train three, four, five times a week and they'll wonder why they're not losing weight. You're not burning that many calories but if you're not adjusting your food. And then people will come in, they'll train, they'll slightly change their food, the weight starts to drop massively. Fantastic. They stop training. They're gone. We give them a call. Where, where are you? Haven't been in a few weeks. They come back. or oh, the weight's gone back up. Genuinely, people don't really know why. Because you haven't looked at your nutrition, the exercise you were doing, the energy out you were doing, has now stopped. Your nutrition stayed the exact same. Energy balance is gonna, is gonna go up, so you, you're gonna gain weight. So it's understanding, if for me, it's uh, the reason I think people don't want to understand, might be controversial, and you could tell me I'm wrong, is that responsibility is, is the key word here. If you understand how it works fully, then you accept responsibility. You understand that, if I, want to if I want to lose weight, this is what I need to do. If, I, if I'm okay to gain weight, then this is what has been happening, all right? Because you can blame all the other things in the world, but that's the fundamental that we have to look at, all right? So understanding energy balance 
is the most important thing. When you do lose weight, it actually gets harder to keep losing weight. And that's something people might get kind of caught up in. So you can lose a lot of weight. And what happens? So when you're a certain weight, your body has to burn calories to keep you alive and to do everything else, okay? And then you lose a lot of weight, your body has to burn less calories to do the same job. And this is the same for exercise. So let's say you did burn 200 calories uh, in a spin class. If you do that spin class every single week, your body adapts. Your body doesn't have to, it just goes, I know what needs to happen here, so I need to burn less calories. It gets, it gets, does to burn less calories for that class. It's the same as if, you're, if you go walking, if you do your 10,000 steps every single day, after a certain period, there's no set time, but like, to give it a couple of months of doing every day 10,000 steps, you are burning less calories. We're, like It's unbelievable, but it's frustrating how good our bodies are. They're made to adapt. So whatever you're doing now, it eventually adapts. And if you don't change that, then that's why the weight loss can slow down. So people can be very quick to just cut calories and think like, I'm going to start eating less again. But if you look at what am I doing here, can I change something that I've probably been doing for 10, 12 weeks and my body's now with that? Can I change that? And that might get things moving again without you having to cut your food. All right, so it's actually like, as much as people talk about this as calories in, calories out being simplified, in my opinion, it's the most complicated area. Weight loss is one of the most complicated areas. I've often said to Keenan, I was like, why the hell did I get into this? Because it's so, it's an area I want to have an impact on, but it's so complex because every single one of you inside here are completely different. Complete individuals, the psychology that everybody has in here is completely different. So like, you have certain habits, you have certain habits that you're doing that are causing you to maybe overeat. And we give advice as best we can. And what people get confused is the advice they get is given to as a broad bit of advice, but if it's not specific to you, then it's not going to suit you. Does anybody any questions on, on energy balance, calories, calories in, calories out, or anything like that? No? You sure? All right. Talk to me after that, because that's the one I need you to get. All right? Let's start. <coughs> Calorie dense foods. Okay, so this is the key here. That's not the meaning of Christmas, just over there, just on, on the right there, I'm sure. So, Knowing the difference in low and high, as we spoke about, okay? So calorie-dense foods are literally foods that there's a lot of calories in them for a small amount. Think chocolate. It's the best way to go because we have a mountain of chocolate out there thanks to all our clients, which is fantastic. I love chocolate. I have to have a mental battle every day when I'm in here now to not eat everything that's there, all right? That conversation, I said this to one of the clients a while ago, you have to have that conversation in your head. And that's where, that's where this mindless, mind-filled thing comes in, okay? So if you don't have a conversation in your head about before you have something, you will always just have it. And it's gone before you know it. But you see the chocolate, every, everybody wants the chocolate. We all want it. But it's trying to decide, do you want to maintain your weight? Do you want to drop body fat or weight? Or do you want the chocolate? If the chocolate wins every so often, which it does, that's okay. But if it continues to win, you have to ask yourself, is this weight loss goal or this weight maintenance goal important enough for you to not have the chocolate? And if it's not, that has to be okay. The biggest frustration people have with themselves is they're not honest with themselves about their goals. They're saying, every, like, everybody says, I want to lose weight. Everybody, I, I, I'd love to be ripped all year round, but I don't want to eat the way I need to eat to be ripped all year round. So I have to accept not being ripped. Same for weight loss. If you want to lose weight, you have to do what you need to do to lose weight but it has to be important enough to stop you from having all the chocolate. You can have some of the chocolate, but not all of it, all right? So identifying these foods at Christmas is absolutely key because this is where we're going wrong. People will talk about, it frustrates the hell out of me, 20 grams of porridge or 30, I might cut my porridge by 20 grams. I'm like, no, I'm like, cut your, cut this. <laughs> like, cut this, they cut one bar of chocolate. Do that in your day, that'll do the job. Like, keep eating the healthy stuff and maybe look at this stuff because I said to Keen, I said to Keen, people are going to hate us in a few years because we're just getting so honest with people. Because even starting my career, I'll be honest, like, you know, I kind of would, would have given people the answers they might have wanted to hear. And that's just kind of fear of maybe losing a client and stuff. But now it's a case of I just want to help as many people as possible so people need to hear the truth. And the truth is, stop looking at your Monday to Thursday food because that's nearly always going to be quite good. And it doesn't mean, like, as soon as people talk about the weekends, it's like, oh, I, I can't enjoy the weekends. Yes, you can, but you can't be a pig at the weekend and not expect there to be consequences, okay? So if you are eating 
large bars of chocolate, if you are drinking endless amounts of alcohol, and you understand energy balance, which we all do know, then you understand what happens. So if, the best way to save calories is look at your calorie dense foods. Because instead of you taking out two or three things, you can take out probably one thing that you actually can do without once you get used to it, and you realize, oh, this is working. So calorie dense foods are all the nice foods. Just think, oh, any nice foods I like, get, yeah, calorie dense, all right? And that, that's probably the, way, the best way to look at it. Uh, and that does make it hard to lose fat. Like it's a really good infographic because that does make it really hard to lose fat because if you're not calorie aware, if you're not checking the calories in things, you're eating it without thinking. And because to you it's just a bear or it's just a bottle or whatever and it's just, those add up. So these really, really do make it easier to lose fat, all right? So these foods are nutrient dense, okay? And they're calorie sparing, so fruits and veg. As like, as much veg as, as you can possibly get into your life, just get in, all right? Like, I, like be a vegan, but just eat meat and dairy. That's, that's, that's how, that's how I'd, I'd say it, like, I mean, just like, that's the way to do it, because the more veg, you, the more, you know how I feel about vegans at this stage. But, uh, but that's, that's it, like, eat as much veg as possible, because what it'll do, it'll fill up your stomach and you will feel full. You'll feel full, so it'll stop you from going from, go for more food, okay? So, fruit, to bust, if anyone still thinks like too much food is bad for you, like I'm telling you right now, it's not, it's not gonna make you gain fat. Like the sugar in food is fructose, it's natural sugars, that's not making you fat. The chocolate bar is probably what's doing it, okay? So understanding, if you go, I'm gonna have an extra portion of fruit and veg every single day, I'm telling you now, like drinking water, eating loads of fruit and veg are two top tips I'd give before even calorie counting. If you increase your veg, like, Again, myself and Keen are doing a survey at the moment for those who filled them out because uh, for a project we're working on. And we asked how many portions of fruit, how many portions of veggies you per day. And for people who are given the names, so we know all the people who are given the names who are maybe you know, at a healthy weight or you know, happy enough for how they are, their portions of fruit and veg are five and six, so four and five. The people who are struggling to lose weight are one and two, two and three. It's this common theme of we're seeing of which, you know, people who are eating more fruit and veg are tending not to have more weight problems. So it's one area that you can definitely look at. Just eat more fruit and veg and you will definitely see a big change in everything else, okay? Everything has a domino effect. That's the most frustrating thing about the industry we're in and, and human bodies. Everything you do is a domino. So people will say, this thing caused this. Correlation isn't causation, okay? So just because something is correlated to it doesn't mean it caused it because as humans, almost everything has a domino. If you're not sleeping, it has a domino effect on, on how hungry you are. It has a domino effect on your body fat. If you're stressed, it has a domino effect on your decisions to eat. So if so these other things all have uh, domino effects, same with this. If you start eating more veg and more fruit, that will have a domino effect that you feel fuller, which will stop you getting more cravings, which will stop you going for calorie-dense foods, which will help with your weight loss goals. So understanding, I want you all, when you come back in the new year, to know the calories of the Kimberly biscuits and, and all the biscuits. But just people don't, don't check because why? Don't you don't want to know. And that's, exa that's exactly it. It really is. It's this, I'm trying to just like put the mirror up and go like, let's be honest with ourselves because I am tired of ye being frustrated at yourselves. And that's really it. It's that personal relationship with yourself that I want you to improve. And that's going to be where you being honest with yourself. It's just the hagen does ice cream, like eight, 900 calories. The Halo top ice cream, 320 calories. It's not as nice. I like. I know it's not as nice, but you're saving 500 calories just to eat it. You'll be fine. Jesus. Right, let's go up next. How are we looking? Alpine calories count. Uh, if you don't remember, it didn't happen. That was vodka. All right. So this is this is an area that honestly, I think just every fitness professional kind of we skim over, which is mental as an Irish society because. Like, it's the, it's the problem, in my opinion. Like, you know, we have a binge drink culture that we're still not getting out of. I still struggle to get out of sometimes when I go drinking. I drink too much. People drink too much. That's all it is. Like, it's, you know, having a couple of drinks is not wrong. So, like, the, the reason I think people avoid talking about this on social media or whatever is because someone just attack you saying, oh, you're just saying you can't have any alcohol. That's not the case. It's the overconsumption of alcohol that's causing your problem. So, when you drink, it's as simple as this. You're, you're, you're poisoning your body. You, that's it. And there's no other way of looking at it. It's a toxin. Your body cannot do anything with alcohol. It can't. It, it can't. So basically what it does, when you start drinking, 
it has to get rid of the alcohol. And everything else starts metabolizing, slows down metabolizing until you get rid of the alcohol. So if you consume 1,000 calories in alcohol, it has to burn off those 1,000 calories before it starts going near the food that you've ate to try and burn that off. All right, so and that's why fat gain is so easy when it comes to alcohol consumption. And what is alcohol? Absolutely calorie dense. Like massive calories in alcohol. And like we're gonna go through it in a second so you get an idea. It does not mean you cannot drink. It's you making a decision of I'm going to have a glass of wine, or let's be realistic, a bottle of wine. All right, I'm gonna have a bottle of wine. But that bottle of wine has, we'll do it in a few seconds, how many calories a bottle of wine has. But understanding I'm drinking that, and that has a consequence. I mean, it's not a negative consequence, it's just a consequence. It's just something that happens because we know we all understand energy balance, we know what happens. When we drink alcohol, we, we have to get rid of that first. So if the six, if the, yeah, yeah, we'll do alcohol calories next time, we'll do the calories next time. Right, guess the calories. Gav is not low plate of skin. All right, so we're gonna guess the calories here. There's one or two guesses, I'm gonna give you the calories of alcohol, all right? So just a standard bottle of wine, and this thing, like, very quick, you know, people, when people talk about calories, they get very specific. There's no exact, it's a mass, there's massive flaws in calorie counting. This is in a rough idea of calories in certain alcohols. And not many of us here will be confident enough to say I drink one, so I kind of done four of a couple of them. All right, so a standard bottle of wine, how many calories do you think is in? Two toes. Two toes? Jesus. Oh, <laughs> how are you drinking? <laughs> how, how many? <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> All right, let's go. Calories in a bottle of wine? 600. All right. Have a bottle of wine, thank you, go on, you know? Happy days. Okay. Calories in four bottles of Coors Light. Four bottles of Coors Light. Four, five, eight. Let's see. 400 calories. All right. Calories. Calories in, <laughs> calories in four pints of Coors Light. You're all going to start drinking after this. It's up. 640 calories, roughly 640 calories. All right. All right, so that, that, that's your light option. Four bottles of Budweiser. How many calories? Nine, nine, Seven, nine, six. Four bottles of Budweiser, 560 calories. All right, that's not bad, is it? No. Let's put, let's put perspective on some of this. So we don't know how many, how many calories you all need to maintain your weight or to lose weight, okay? But I'm going to just pick a figure here of 1,800 calories for a woman to maintain weight, okay? You have a bottle of wine. That's one third of your total calories for that day. Now that's perspective before we continue. Understand that so you're like, oh, it's only 600. It's one third of your, all your calories for you to maintain your weight. So just knowing that. And then what I haven't put up there is the bottle of wine plus the bag of Doritos you have and you dip those in. And that's so exactly, you know what I mean? So, and, and it's, it's understanding that. So four bottles of wine is 560, four points of wood. Four points of wood, Wizzle. Ah, uh, Keen. <laughs> 800 calories. Again, 800 calories. Four points of Budweiser. But let's, let's like, points of Bud, cores. Make the switch. I was like, oh, Bud is, Bud is nice though. I'm like, by how much? The Bud not nice. <laughs> okay, points of Guinness. So people drinking Guinness. So anyone you normally drink Guinness? How many calories? It's lower than Cores and Bud. It's lower than Cores and Bud. No, it's not. Guinness. 840 calories in four Guinness. Just on, again, like, all I'm trying to show you is like, you know, now you know, you know. That's it, you have a choice to make, now you know. Okay, vodka and tonic. Vodka and tonic, I think. Yeah. Full fat tonic. Full fat tonic. <laughs> in four of them, sorry. Four, four of them. Four, 400. On Keen. 400 calories. You knew that one, then. All right, next two we're going to go, so I'm going to give you four gin and tonic, and then four gin and slimline tonic. I just want to give you the calories. Here. 440, 220. The difference, 200 calories is the difference of you going, sorry bartender, can I have a slimline tonic instead of a regular tonic? 200 calories is the difference. If you've eight of them, 400 calories you've saved by asking a question instead of just taking the tonic off the barman. All right, understanding that. No, we have... Four point bottle of Bulmers. The cure. Oh. Oh. At least they all know it is one of the highest ones. Alright, so a point bottle of Bulmers. 980 calories. No. 
a thousand calories. Four pint bottles, one thousand calories. I'm not saying don't drink them, but understand there's a thousand calories. You have 800 calories left to play with if you want to maintain your weight for that day. And you're going to have five, six of them. So, uh, then if you went, all right, I'd like a cider, but I'm going to have a Bulmer's Light, three bo or four bottles of that. What? Four light. 360 calories. You're still getting that Bulmer's feel, but you're going to save that many calories. And the last one, coming into Christmas, a bottle of Prosecco, how many calories do we think has? 800. Oh, even nice, it's only 500. Let's start, 500. All I want you to do is understand the calories. That's it. Prosecco for me. So, it's understanding these calories is the most important thing. It's just that they, it's understanding they exist. That's all I want you to do. I'm not saying don't drink them. Do whatever you want. But if you understand there's this many calories, so what do I do if I want to have a few drinks and still maintain my weight? If I want to have a few drinks and still maintain my weight, one of the options or tips I give to people, that day or that week, Start reducing your calories slightly, knowing you're going drinking on a Friday or a Saturday. All right, so just, just slightly take out a snack each day. That's going to somewhat counteract a little bit of this. Not all of it, but a little bit of this. On the day of, keep your protein high. Reduce your carbs and fats slightly throughout your day, because the protein will help you feel fuller, and then you're saving calories that day. The next day, when you're very hungover, well, if only after four, you won't be that hungover. <laughs> but if you're after eight or 12, then you might be. The next day is the biggest challenge for people. It's like I'm hungover and it's like, feck the gym, I don't even care about it until Monday again. But you're in that mentality of like, I don't care, I just like, not nah, give me the hot chicken roll. And knowing that, that you've consumed, over consumed calories that night, do not feel guilty because you have made that decision. That's so, like, just take that from it. Like, you've decided to consume that. Nobody else has forced you, or maybe your drunk friend for a shot or something, but nobody else has forced you to do it. And once you own that decision, everything changes. I really believe that. If you understand energy balance, if you understand you are the person making these decisions, you shouldn't feel bad because you're the one doing it. There's a reason you're making this decision. Don't be chastising yourself for doing it. Own the decision. And so like when you, when you do, don't freak out and think I'm gonna not eat for the next three days because what that will do, studies have shown that what that binge and restrict mentality will do will lead to a binge again. So if you kind of have a bad Friday or Saturday and you go massive restrict of 1000 calories a day for the next four days, you will binge again. You have to just start eating as normal again but maybe just slightly reducing your snack here and there. Calories don't happen I actually didn't believe I had to say this to my sister's husband. I was, I was recording this, yeah. Uh, so, but like, the calories don't stop at 12 o'clock and start again. He genuinely did, he did. He was like, you know, he you know, doesn't know anything really about fitness or health or whatever. And he was like, I didn't eat anything today so I get more calories tomorrow. I'm like, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. So just understanding alcohol calories count over the Christmas period. If your goal is to just you know, maintain weight or put up only a couple of pounds and you realise I'm drinking pints of butters or pints of Guinness, can I switch to a lighter option? Then that's going to help save you calories. If you think, forget about the four, from now until January, how many of those you're going to consume, if you can make a, a slightly lower calorie option, add that number together, there's your calorie deficit. All right? Any questions on that? No. For key, you know, key and most of them. <laughs> depends, depends on the espresso martini. <laughs> 150, please, yeah. Right, next there, so. Quick question I can answer here, or I can ask here, are, are lower calorie and zero calorie options safe or a better option? Again, studies have, have been done enough, like, aspartame is a chemical, okay, and it, it's been shown in moist that when it's massively, massively overconsumed, it can be harmful, okay? That's what it's shown, but the amounts that are needed are outrageous. You will not consume enough on your day-to-day -day basis to cause you any harm, as far as studies go right now. It's not been around long enough for us to really know, but 100% going from a low, if you're drinking cans of Coke, going to a zero calorie option is a way better option to go for. Try and save calories where you can if your goal is weight loss. If your goal is weight gain, eat the calories, but if your goal is weight loss or weight maintenance, same with the Slimline Tonic, same for the Coors Light, People often say low fat milk versus full fat milk. Full fat milk is healthier. Yes, it is. It has more probiotics and will help you more. But if your goal is weight loss, 
maybe switching to low fat milk for a period of time will help. There's no massive detrimental, as far as we know, health benefits to going to low calorie or zero calories. So if something tastes even slightly similar and your goal is weight loss, go for that. Liquid calories are killing us. Like liquid calories are calories that people just again, because they don't understand energy balance, are not calorie aware, don't understand liquid calories. You drink, like even if you have a smoothie, I tell everyone, stop having smoothies, eat all the fruit throughout your day. If you have four pieces of fruit, it's gone. What happens is it's already broken down. So it leaves your stomach very quickly, gives you all the calories, all the energy, but your stomach is empty again, which sends signals to your brain that you're hungry, so you then start eating again. So instead of having the smoothie, have your pear, your apple, your banana as snacks throughout your day. Okay, just really important. It really frustrates me, and it shouldn't at all, but it frustrates me in coffee shops when I see people with the big mocha chocolate thing about this size, and I'm like, you don't know there's about 500 calories in that. Like, they don't know. And I'm like, that's, I, I don't blame them for not knowing, but if you're like an Americano with a drop of milk, do you know, compared to that, if you're struggling to lose weight and you're having a, a latte that has 200 calories in it, and it's just like, do you know, understanding the difference of, can I switch my latte to an Americano? Yeah. You'll be like, no, I definitely can't. I'm like, you do it for two days and then you realize you can. It's just you're, you're, you're used to something. You have habits built and ingrained that you're doing. And if you become aware of those habits, you can now change those habits to help you in your goals. And I really stress that. Like, I'm not telling you you have to do anything. I'm telling you that if you want to lose weight, this is what you need to do. This is, like, this is how we do it. All right? Keep exercising and stay active. So you need to exercise and treat exercises if you're going to do it until the day you die. And for the rest of your life. People approach exercise in this short-term mentality of I'm holidays in six weeks, I'm going to go flat to the mat for five, you know, and they'll train, and then they've done it so intensely that they kind of reduce their training or stop training altogether. Exercise as if you can exercise for the rest of your life. Me personally, um, I, I'm getting a bit old, 32, like, you know, but I've had to adjust my training because I was lifting like an idiot, uh, a bro, when I was younger, you know, power lifting and just lifting stupid weights and my back's no sore because of it. But like, I, I, I want to train for the next 30, 40 years, I really do. So I've had to adjust my training to train lighter to, for that longer period of time. So take your approach of like, if you're training six times a week, like fair play, well done. Can you keep training six times a week? Probably not, okay? Can you train well three or four times a week? Do that, okay? Let's start taking a longer term approach to mentality. You don't need a break. Your body physically doesn't need a break if you're training once twice a week. You do not need a break. If you want to take one, do. But I'm telling you, if I hear you say, I'm giving my body a break, no. It's not what's happening, all right? So, especially over the Christmas period, we tend to just stop moving. That's it. We just like sit down, <laughs> stick on the movies. Stephen gets his box celebrations out. Uh, but like, get up and go for a walk. If the weather is dry, Get out and go for a walk. Go for a 30, 40, 50 minute walk every single day. Like, people say they can't do something. Like, there's a big difference between can't and choose not to. And a lot of the time it's you choose not to. It's not that you can't. There's like, if, like when it comes to exercise, unless you have a physical ailment that's stopping you, you can exercise. You're choosing not to. Exercise does not mean smashing weights in the gym. It does not mean doing a spinning class you hate. It means doing something. Cardiovascular exercise means doing something to get your heart rate up. Unfortunately, I had to explain to a man the other day that golf isn't, isn't a cardiovascular exercise for his health. I love golf, but it's not. It doesn't get your heart rate up. It doesn't challenge your heart rate. That's what cardiovascular exercise is. Strength training, resistance training should be done. That's bodyweight exercise. That's doing squats, lunges, push-ups at home if you've never done that before. That's maybe getting a couple of dumbbells, doing some work. If it's someone who trains regularly, it's pushing yourself a little bit more in the gym. Resistance training and cardio training both need to be done for your health. I said, like, all the studies, there's nothing but studies to show the stuff we already know for us to live healthier and live as long as possible and disease free. It's exercising regularly, it's good nutrition, it's sleeping, it's being less stressed, it's having good relationships. All these areas are going to help you, everything shows, all these will help you have less risk of getting type 2 diabetes, less risk of getting cancers, less, less risk of being obese. Yes, we're, there's lower things we're not doing. We're trying to just look at everything else. And I'm like, do the fundamentals correctly and you'll get a massive result. And one of these is exercising. Find an exercise you enjoy. If you hate doing something, please stop doing it. 
find something else. That's it. Don't don't keep doing an exercise of your hair or, uh, unless it's lunges. Don't keep doing an exercise of your hair. I'll put just on, you know, keep doing something that you have to do. But do it all year round. Do it because you enjoy it, not because you have to. If you're doing something because you have to, it's not something that you should be doing. All right. <sighs> Second last slide. Good job. All right, it's January. Don't panic. I'm way over 30 minutes. Uh, <laughs> You haven't gained 10 pounds of fat. All right? This is, I said, like, I said, Key, and what was my goal here beforehand? It was like change somebody's mindset going into Christmas uh, to get them to understand energy balance and to, for this, this is, this is it, for you not to hit January and panic because you have not gained 10 pounds of fat. To put on actual fat takes a lot of time, okay? So you've put on a few pounds of fat and they, that will come off when you start, you know, eating better and changing your diet again. But people will, because of this, dreaded thing up here, the weighing scales that people still have very bad relationships with, they'll just go, right, I'm gonna cut all my carbohydrates, I'm gonna join a gym that's gonna give me a really diet here that's gonna just, I'm gonna be starving and unhappy, but I'm gonna see the weighing scales drop, so that'll make me happy psychologically. Trust me, please, it's a plea. Like, don't panic when you come back in January and you see the weighing scales up five, six, even seven pounds. A lot of that will be water weight. Okay, so when, when you consume extra food, salty foods, carby foods, you hold a lot of water, okay? When you start getting back into the routine, start drinking your water, start eating well, you'll see a couple of pounds drop off. And over time, the weight will come down, okay? If your weight has st stopped or you've stalled, there's a number of reasons. You have got to ask one of us as a coach and be honest with us about your movement, your nutrition, your training, and we will be able to identify maybe one area that's stopping you from losing weight and getting going again. You do not have to go on an extreme diet to lose weight because what will happen is you will put it back on. If you can't, it doesn't mean like, it's okay to go back or like maybe taking a break from the chocolate or the alcohol for a few weeks. That will benefit you, but it's the case of like starving yourself just to see the number on that thing go down, all right? For those who know us, know how we feel about that, the weighing scales is a marker, but that's all it is, one marker of how we're doing, okay? So if you understand how much that fluctuates, then you'll have a better relationship with it. I try to get my clients to step on the scales as much as possible, as long as they're comfortable with it, because they now understand that it goes up and down almost daily, four or five pounds. And that gives you a realization that that's not a real accurate marker of, am I a good person or am I a failure? Because that's how some people see the weighing scales when they step on it. They come off and it's ruined the whole day. Please do not panic. Even if you decide to forget everything I said tonight, drink and eat everything without even looking at the calories or being calorie aware, even then, when you come back in January, don't go on a fad diet. Don't do anything extreme because the weight you've put on in those two weeks is not the key. It's the other 50 weeks of the year that are important 50 weeks, all right? So I really want you to focus on that. That's one of the main points. That was a very serious tone I had there. <laughs> and, uh, but it was. No, anybody, any questions for me before we go on to the last slide? Not at all. So you all understand energy balance completely. There's a quiz coming there after this only. <laughs> you do, yeah? Anyone, any questions? What, anything at all? We'll give five seconds on. Okay. Last slide. Top tips to survive Christmas. And I know survive is a bit strong, but it's like, you know, it is that thing of people just coming back and just being really sad because of the weight they put on and I want to stop that. Keep active, stay moving and play. We've stopped playing. Like, we've stopped playing all together. Like, it's, it's crap. You see kids, like my niece and nephew, they're having so much fun. Why, why have we stopped? Like, get out and play with the kids. Like, you know, when, they're, when they want to get out and they want to go for a game of ball or they want to go outside and play, get off your ass and go out with them. That's like, literally, if they're going to go on the scooter or whatever, go out with them. It's an opportunity for you to play with your kids and you to move more, all right? Get off your phone. That's not there. Get off your phone. <laughs> We're always on our phones. We are so mindless. We, again, the survey we've been doing has been like, how much time do you spend on social media? One to two hours per day. What do you get out of social media? Nothing. Get off it. Like, what are you doing? Like, seriously, so we need to start moving way more. Keep exercising. Like, keep exercising. We're open right through Christmas, Bar, Christmas Day, Stephen's Day. If you're not exercising here, exercise at home. Go walking. Get moving. Have an understanding of energy balance. I mean, if you don't understand, stay here after. I'll stay here until 12 o'clock tonight explaining it to you. All right? 
reduce or become aware of your alcohol intake. So again, we get frustrated at other things when we can look at, can I have three drinks instead of six drinks? Heineken Zero have marketed it just perfectly, in my opinion. It gives me a complete placebo effect that I'm drinking. Over the last two weekends, I've met the lads and I've had Heineken Zero, and I'm like, yeah, I'm having a few drinks. And the first time I thought I was getting into the car thinking, what was I drinking? But like, it's a fiver bottle, which is a dose. But then people also said, like, given out about the price when I had it in my hand, they're like, you're paying a fiver for that. I'm like, yes, because I get to socialize with my friends. So I feel like I'm drinking. If I drink in water, it's, it's not the same for me. So like zero, again, zero calorie drinks will do a job. And someone's like, you're paying a five for I'm like, yeah, I could pay a five for a normal Heineken, which is the same thing. Why? Because I'm getting drunk off that one. It's okay, but I'm not getting drunk off this one. So it's not okay. Do you understand that mentality that we have? It's like, don't spend money uh, on something that's not going to get you drunk. That's a bit mental, but nobody says it. And I said to the lads and they're like, oh, so this is the thing. <laughs> Socialize with family and friends and remember. Now, I put that remember in there because I think that's quite important, all right? So, we drink, most people drink to socialise. That's what I ask people, why do you go drink to again? Oh, I have to have life socialising with my friends. I'm all for it. If you're drinking to the state that you cannot remember, you're not socialising. You're binge drinking. And that's causing a problem to your health and to your relationships with your friends because when you're drinking to forget, there's, there's, some, there's an issue there that you're not dealing with. There's a deeper issue you're not dealing with. So you have to look at your drinking. If you're socializing with family and friends, that's, how, that's what drinking, in my opinion, is for. But make sure we're not drinking to that extent. If you are, don't be afraid to be honest with yourself and ask yourself a question. We never self-analyze. You wait for somebody else to analyze you, get odd with them for analyzing you, and then try maybe analyze yourself. So don't be afraid to ask yourself a question. Look at lower calorie options where possible. Okay, so it's a, again, change. Can I do this instead of this? If the answer is yes, go do that. All right? If, if it's complete no, that's fine, but you definitely can save calories somewhere if your goal is weight loss. Take your time when eating and be mindful. Okay, so again, not like me with the chocolate biscuits, just wolfing them down without thinking. It's if you stop for a second and give yourself a chance to be full, just give yourself a chance for your, your brain to say, no, I'm actually okay, before you tuck in again, then you'll be surprised how. how Little, like you might eat a little bit less, but if you're just eating it all, you don't actually have a chance for your, to your body to send signals to your brain to say, I'm full. And then we get like, okay, I was there, absolutely overstuffed after Christmas pudding and just couldn't move. So like, you know, <laughs> but it, it's because you're eating too quickly. Uh, mindful eating is, is, a, is a good thing. It has its place. Uh, and it is a case of just knowing the food you're eating and stopping for a second, having a conversation and then coming back to your food. And that's a really, Big tip I take, especially over the Christmas period, all right? Eat as much veg as you can, as I said, be a vegan, just eat meat and dairy. Drink more water. Absolute king. This is probably the most frustrating one as a coach, I think we'd all agree here, that I'm like, you're not drinking two liters of water. The most fundamental, basic thing that we can do to improve our health, our cognitive function, our sleep, our stress levels, you're not doing that. Why are you trying to do all the other fancy stuff? Just drink the water. So if you're not drinking two liters of water, Start doing that. You can put in the zero sugar cordial and that'll help you drink it. I don't like to taste the water. I like drink the cordial, so, all right? It's actually, excuses are gone, they're gone. Remember, you're in control of your choices. Own them, all right? You have to, and this is something, this is it. I want, it, if you understand energy balance, you understand you're in control of your choices, you will get less frustrated with yourself knowing that because you have the power to make a decision to do something, to not do something, to change something. That's all in your hands. You're being influenced and people are trying to market you and people you have like, you know, even family and friends who you might think are supporting you but then they're asking to come up for drinks and stuff. So it is really, really hard. Understand it is really hard, but knowing that you still have a choice to make every single time. It's always your choice. That's so important to understand. All right? And whatever you do, Sue, Decide to do, spend time with those close to you, be grateful for what you have, and have a good Christmas. Thanks.